Good. 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 And we're back. Welcome back to the Side by Side Guys Off Road Podcast. I'm Big Z. I'm still Ian with Full Throttle Battery. And we're still here at UTV Takeover. Coos, uh, not Coos Bay. They're not going to get rid of us. Sand Hollow, Utah. This is uh, working up to be an awesome event, awesome place to ride, and uh, pretty stoked to be here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, um, I'm looking forward to getting out there today. Um, I'm going to be in no hurry to come off the, uh, come off the features. I want to get out there and go check this place out for a while. Got so. a few clips in yesterday. You were out with the drone a little bit this morning. Yeah. Yeah, if I could get my computer to keep up with the footage and actually see what we got, it looks pretty epic. Uh, so look forward to those. Uh, maybe we'll sprinkle some in on the podcast. But uh, once again, we're joined by a special guest. Um, he is the originator um, member of the group that started the uh, GeForce Off-Road UTV accessory brand. Yeah. Um, and he's here today with some new stuff. So, yeah. Taylor Postel. What's up, dude? How's it going? Yeah. How's the, uh, how's the sunshine treat? I guess you're, you've been living in San Diego for a little while. Yeah. It's yeah. nice and sunny. A little, uh, little foggy here and there, but good. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. What do you think of the terrain out here in Utah? It's a good mix. You got dunes like uh, Glamis, and then you got some uh, rock crawling like Moab, and then you got some high-speed stuff kind of like Baja, so you got best of both worlds. So you've ridden in Baja. Have you ridden in uh, Moab as well? Yeah, went to Rally on the Rocks last year, did a lot of crawling, a little little too slow for me personally, but yeah. it's still crazy what the vehicles can do, you know, just all I have is 32-inch tires, disconnect the sway bars, and climb up everything, so. Yeah, I've actually uh, talked to some people that, as it relates to Moab, opinions kind of vary on Moab. This place seems like kind of a nice, happy medium between yeah. the two. you can do a little bit of both. You got the rock crawling and then you can turn around and hit a you know 80 miles an hour on some whoops so yeah. yeah it seems like a good place for families too like there's some good variety you can go straight down to the beach you can go up to the sand and play you can go up to some rocks and climb you can all sorts of different stuff with both utvs and just the kiddos so yeah. uh seems like a good place yeah we were talking to uh, brandon raddick and al mcbeth earlier and we were talking about how much different the sand is out here it's noticeably different it's really really heavy yet fine it's kind of hard to describe moves easy it's 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 it moves around fast yeah. so uh yeah uh glad to have you on the show um why don't you give us a little background on the brand um you're here representing amped off road uh your little baby uh brand that you're kind of growing um but it hasn't uh it's not new it's been around just under a different name let us know what's going on there yeah so um i grew up in the racing industry my dad used to race cars as a when i was growing up and even before i was born so then he started a racing safety equipment brand called GeForce Racing Gear in the early 90s. So kind of pioneered the entry level, you know, everyday safety equipment and compared to Bell Simpson were really the only big guys in the U.S. back then. So grew up with that, did some uh, racing stuff on the side, did racing schools, always been involved in cars and then um, kind of came into the company and saw that we could easily translate that to off-road with since we are doing harnesses helmets safety equipment like that just saw an easy opening and did g-force off-road and then we have recently sold g-force racing gear so it is now transitioned to amped off-road but we're still doing the same products uh really you know trying to push the safety regimen while still you know innovating we have some new features on the products we have our helmets are kind of very specific niche items that uh aren't currently served in the market and our harnesses have some removal pads, just small little features, you know, to try and really uh, the little things to elevate your experience as a rider and uh, just not reinvent the wheel, but perfect it. And, and at a reasonable price without going over, you know, over a certain threshold and becoming uncomfortable on the purchase. Oh, of course. Yeah, we are very competitively priced across the board. So we're not trying to upsell on a luxury feature that, you know, we know doesn't cost us a lot of money. So we're not going to pass that along to the end consumer just to you know, make some more money. So we're just trying to be fair with everybody. Shots across the bow. Yeah. <laughs> so passive, I first came passive aggressiveness in its truest <laughs> form. <laughs> I first came aware of the brand back when um, Rugged Radio started carrying your helmets. 
Um, you have a line of uh, pumper helmets that are three quarter to the side instead of on the top center or the side. Correct. Um, and to those that aren't familiar with uh, pumper helmets, you basically have three different formats, right? You have a you have a top crown uh, inlet. You'll have a three quarter, which is off to the side a little bit, and then one that's on the jawline. Um, and what I found is that the three quarter is kind of the best of all worlds because you get the air coming down from the front on your visor, keeping the fog off of the visor, um, like a like a top crown would. Uh, but you're not losing the headroom that you would coming from a, a tall guy like I am, you know, I don't fit in a lot of cages. And so having that top crown hose on your helmet is a non start for me. So, uh, that three quarters, the, it's a great solution because of the jawline, you don't get any of that anti fog. No, it just improvements. blows right in your face. Yeah. So, and with the, uh, so the top lower placement, you already, a helmet, you know, adds two, three inches on top of your head. So if you're already having clearance issues, especially with aftermarket cages where they're lower than stock. That's a problem. And then the front, like you said, the airflow is not good. It blows on your mic, just not a very effective solution. So our three-quarter air, actually, it flows the same as the top air. So there's actually air channels cut into the EPS foam. So it's directed right in front of your face onto the shield. And then it comes through holes in the top as well to just kind of provide the most air circulation you can get. And then you don't have the clearance issues because it doesn't add any height or width to the helmet. It stays with, if you put a box around the helmet, it doesn't add any extra dimension. So if you can fit a helmet while you're riding in your cage, then it's going to work with that offset blower as well. And those helmets come with neck gaiters and all that kind of stuff too. Yep. Comes with the dusker. It comes with everything you need. We sell different color shields if you want to change that up but uh, pretty much everything you need. Different size cheek pads. If you have a thinner face, but it fits the crown of your head and you want a little more pinch, then you do that. If you have a larger face and you need more relaxed cheek pads, we can do that as well. And you can get those off your website? Correct. Awesome. And then you guys uh, moved into also harnesses and uh, got some removable uh, shoulder pads, which is a nice touch. And you can adjust them at that point as well a little bit. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, and those are a standard four point. Do you have anything besides four point? We do four point auto buckles. So that's the most popular for ease of use and families, you know, just like a regular seat belt. And then we also have a racing latch and a fifth point can be added to that. You can choose to use it if you want. And then that is also compatible with our seats as well. So we have a cutout that's, uh, in the seats for the fifth point that we recommend, but a lot of people don't normally right. go for that. So tell us a little bit about your personal, I mean, you've kind of taken the, the Amped Off-Road brand under your wing individually, correct? Like it used to be a family thing, um, if I understand correctly, and it's become more of your kind of project? No, so um, I actually, so my father passed away when I was in high school, and uh, the company, kind of the current employees uh, of with GeForce Racing Gear kind of ran it. And then I went, would, still went to college and everything, and then came into the company and learned from the ground up and everything and ran that for a few years and then created GeForce Off-Road while I was doing that. Oh, okay. And then um, we kind of saw, you know, the racing world's not were not a growing market after 08, you know, just it wasn't what I wanted to do. And uh, my with my mom, she was uh, she's the owner after my father passed and then she was ready to be done. So then we just pushed, sold that. And then I kept the off-road venture that I started and then just have run with it. So um, looking into this uh, this year, this has been a kind of a crazy year. I think you started this whole process almost a year ago, right, as far as the rebrand goes? So the rebrand actually only happened in end of June. So really? So we were okay. working on – so we had – GeForce Off-Road has been around for about two years, and we were finally getting traction, you know, new brand in the side-by-side -side world. Kind of, some people recognized it if they knew GeForce Racing Gear. They kind of had an idea. But if you're not a racer, then you really aren't going to know who we are or our history. So we were finally getting traction and then had to completely switch gears with Amped and just trying to promote the brand, but still let people know it's the same as the previous brand, trying to get, we had full inventory of the old product and branding. So it's been a interesting process to try and get rid of that and then also get the new stuff and still communicate with people because we're selling both, you know, right. clearing out the old brand and trying to tell people it's not, we're not resellers, you know, we are the manufacturer compared to, uh, other companies. So now's the time to get in on a good set of uh, safety gear. If you have been putting it off because of the price tag, there's even incentives uh, on your old branded content, even Correct. though it's yeah. not any different. It's no. just it's not bad or old product. It just has the wrong name on it, and we're uh, willing to get rid of it <laughs> at a really good price. Awesome. Yeah, I think uh, uh, in, in off road, I was seeing a lot of G Force racing stuff just by default. You'd see guys in fire suits, uh, racing suits, a uh, lot of lot of window nets, you know. Yeah, there was definitely crossover, and that's kind of what gave me the idea initially of going into off-road. Like, we already made, you know, harnesses and everything. You just 
change, tweak a few features and then they're more tailored to off-road and we have our racing background so we've done everything from sfi to snell and know how to make a safe product at a reasonable price as well so we always push we don't cut corners on everything it's the same webbing hardware everything except for the auto buckle since you can't use that in racing but everything else is the same you'd find on sfi are your uh, helmets dot and snell or just dot they're just dot so um that's part of the agreement we had for selling the company so we're just purely recreational now moving forward we're never going to have any racing products but uh the recreation market is where we see the biggest opportunity and growth to begin with so being a new company, I'm not going to say that uh, UTV is like super saturated. Um, being a new company, kind of getting your foot into the door uh, and getting visibility on a new tr line, uh, I can see presents its own challenges. But with that in mind, like, will Clemson win another national championship with Trevor Lawrence at <laughs> quarterback? Of course. What do you mean? Have you seen the recent games? Alabama's our only, only uh, opposition that we'll probably see. And then move on from there now I when i say clemson am i pronouncing it right is it clemson or is it clemson 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 yeah don't do don't people do get Z offended <laughs> yeah, clemson the, all the announcers <laughs> go clemson yeah yeah it yeah. just offends every all 50 of you that uh <laughs> that live in south carolina i think or is it single, north carolina south carolina is it south carolina? i think you single-handedly like lost half our viewers but gained another half <laughs> from the east coast ah, <laughs> diversity <laughs> So um, give us a little background on, on where you come from. Like, what have you uh, been involved in? And, and I know you, uh, Ian was talking to you about some racing history. Kind of give us some background on that. So born and raised in Atlanta. Um, grew up in, I guess, you know, normal life in southeast. So it's definitely a different lifestyle than coming out to California. Different. But um, got to travel as a kid. Got to see a lot of the world. And I think that gave me good perspective as far as that goes. And then was always into... Um, ATVs as a kid, uh, off-roading, and cars, you know, if it went fast, you know, every opportunity I could go, my, uh, since my dad used to race, we had a fast AMG, and as a kid, it was just like, when can we take this car out, because it's just, the, you know, they're torque monsters, and you just don't even have to go over 60, or what, just that acceleration was the thrill for me as a kid, so anytime I could get behind any wheel, or... An AMG or an AMC? Like AMG. A, oh, okay. Mercedes, yeah. Gotcha. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. So, I can we go to the grocery you, store? I no, need, I, need I, to <laughs> uh, I forgot he is significantly younger than me. Like when I hear <laughs> torque, and a, I was figuring you're talking like a javelin or something. No. Yeah. No, but yeah, and we had the original Razor 800 too. So, right when it came out, we had that. It was a little bit of a nightmare, you know, but that kind of got me into the UTV stuff as a kid. So, we used to work on that. You'd have to, to do anything, you'd have to take the entire car apart, essentially take the cage off to get the front plastics off and like all that good stuff so i know you're old but he just made me feel old by saying he got into utvs as a kid <laughs> it's 2008 i'm just gonna sit over here and be old <laughs> i think that's my goal now with every podcast it's just the jab you on your age a little bit yeah i still get around like a 40 year old 43 and a half year old <laughs> <laughs> so um yeah and so did you, did you ever do any like a uh, autocross or anything like that or yeah did some autocrossing from starting carts doing that a few times when i was a kid then uh when i got older took my own car and things like that and then did all the skip barber racing schools with their formula cars and things like that and just have done track days and things like that but never uh, organized racing i just felt it was too much of a i mean it's a commitment it's you a big investment investment even to, i would say time's the biggest thing if you have the money but are you willing to any free time you have on testing working on the car practice it's just i enjoy it but i'd rather have just fun with it rather than dedicating my life to it right so keep it as a hobby and not start to hate it because you're spending all your time doing that and nothing else so you uh, recently jumped into uh, an X3. What are, you, what are you running over there? So we have a 2018 XDS Turbo R. So it's tuned, got a bunch of stuff on it. But, um, yeah, it's 64-inch, but uh, I think it still handles everything out here great. It can work on the tighter stuff. A little more agile than the 72, lacks a little stability, but it's got stage 3 tuning on it, so it's plenty fast, you know. Plenty yeah, to get you in trouble. You, you let me drive it yesterday, and uh, it kind of has an effect on the, uh, like the sand affects it differently than what I'm used to. Like, you really, it's almost like a jet ski. You got to be under power to get it to go anywhere. You know, otherwise it's just getting kind of, 
you know, if you're on a, if you're on a, any sort of sand hill or something like that, you're just drifting, you're just sliding this, that, and the other. And it's, it makes for a pretty fun trail ride though, you know, where you're, we're, essentially you're doing a lot of torque steering yep. you know we were talking about that with brandon and al earlier where it seems like out here when you're rallying you're setting your corners up super early mm-hmm. unlike you would in o- o- oregon where you just throw it in referring but, to the sand yeah yeah but uh you probably get with that that's narrower track you're probably darting in and out of these rocks out here a lot faster than we would on 72. yeah it's definitely got some agility advantages i mean but in the more wide open stuff i'd say you'd lose out but i've it's so capable regardless of the 62 or 74 if you're really pushing it hard enough to actually need the difference you're probably a professional at that point so (laughs) there it's plenty capable it's plenty fast to get you in enough trouble and have enough fun at the same time so coming from the east coast and then moving over to the west or not east coast but east side uh and some of the more narrow type trail riding that they have over there and then coming to the west coast and having more of the desert and the and the dunes and all that stuff uh something we asked the other guys during the interview was you know kind of what's your preferred riding terrain scenario like where, where do you find most comfort and most fun i would definitely say west coast but uh, baja is probably one of my favorites what is it about coast. baja because I, I know you and i've talked about that a lot it's just endless i mean you can go anywhere there's you can drive on the road if you need to not that you ever want to but that's if you have to get to another trail and just it's most of the roads where we are we're in irandira south of ensenada and that's just everything's dirt even the public roads and everything like that so you can just go anywhere you want and trails are everywhere and it's just a lot just you're free to do what you want glamis isn't on the list you were talking about glamis and uh i think i've been there i've been there not not my favorite i mean it's it's fun i just you know well disclaimer (laughs) you're not running paddles I have not run paddles it, it could ever change. in the sand, so it could change my mind. But as far as just airing down your standard tires, it was it's a good time. I just think it's like uh, over in Glamis, they have, I guess, towards the canal where it's more of a trail where you're running between bushes. And I'm to me, having a defined trail where I can see the line and like road racing kind of so you can see the corner, hit the apex right, I just I'm used to that more, and I think that's more fun because I know what the line is. But then sand is just so... I guess work Read you know? and react. Exactly. Yeah. So it's I'm not used to that. I'm sure if I spent more time there could get better at it and have more fun. But if I'm following somebody in the sand then I can you know, just treat it more like a fixed line or like a race course. What if you follow me into a bull drop in, something like that? You, you, you trust yeah. me? Yeah. All right. If you if someone if someone does it first, I'll I'll follow it and you make it, I'll go for it. But yeah. I'm just it's, I'm, Well, that's the no. thing about a bull drop in is sometimes you don't know if they made it or not. <laughs> Would you um would you say there's any difference between generic desert riding in like the states versus going down south of the border and, and seeing the Baja kind of terrain? Yes, because you can ride on the beach. <laughs> so it's just like I said, you can. It's everything. We uh, like if you're familiar with the thousand, like last year from the Rock Whoops, that was right near where we were staying. So you have these. The trophy trucks went through, and I tried to take my Can Am through it, and it's three, four foot. You can't stay on top of it because it's space uh, too yeah it's yeah. space too far and you're just sitting there going up and down and you're bottoming it it's a g out on every single whoop and your skid plate's just getting pounded by these huge river rocks and and then you go into the sand and it's just a huge variety and i ran into a little bit of that out at winchester bay last time i was out there and uh, we had a guest on uh, named george hamill george is a guy out of uh out of arizona and he just finished up the utv worlds on an rs1 and he was talking about a guy by the name of jesse nelson and Je- jesse used to race for factory ktm and he was talking about jesse driving uh, a turbo s and doubling whoops which is really you know motocross guys yeah. double whoops a lot so I'll see whoops that line up like that to where I'm going to give it a try. It never freaking works out, <laughs> man. <laughs> and you don't want to screw it up. No, I it's like I just, you know, like when you're doubling them on a motocross bike, obviously you just have so much more ability. You know, it's, it's just an easier process. Like I, I think maybe one of these days I'll get it down, but like and it, I think it would have to be like on a two-seater, but I, I've tried to do that a few times where it lines up appropriately never once pulled it off successfully yeah i would caution that because last year's 1000 i stuffed it just hitting the whoops and didn't know how big they're yeah and i think (laughs) we found that my front end might be tweaked so i think that's where it came from yeah (laughs) insurance claim yeah (laughs) if you're trying like trying to double on that you we got air on the first one and then it's a three foot wall in front of you and we didn't make it yeah (laughs) (laughs) hashtag we didn't make it (laughs) 
<laughs> but car still ran fine, but we tore it down uh, this spring and then found some damage. So I think that might have been where it came from. Yeah, that teardown, though, it, it's looking good now, man. Like, I, I think you have some of the best X3 doors I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah Matrix Off-Road, a uh, friend of mine that I've known, and he was just supposed to watch it for me for the summer and <laughs> use it as a jig for uh, him building his new doors and cage. And then it turned into a frame up rebuild, essentially. <laughs> so it's dialed now, but um, yeah, just not the project either of us expected. So he's mad at me, calling me, yelling that he can't get my axles out. And then I'm yelling at him for the bill. So, you know, that's how it works. You're looking at the new RR thinking, yeah, I probably could have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, too late now. But no, it's it's dialed in where it needs to be. Just a few small tweaks at the end of the season, replace some more stuff. Just parts have been so hard to come by yeah. with everything. And it was supposed to be ready for trail. We've just, you know, you run into speed bumps, just wanted to get it done. And yeah. then just a few pieces need to go on it over the winter or springtime. And then we'll be, it'll be a car I probably keep forever. <laughs> and you were out here a couple of weeks ago at trail here. A little different vibe, huh? I was. It was uh, a lot more Jeeps, a lot more Jeep heavy. There's still a lot of UTVs, but um, we were definitely a minority. Yeah. So uh, going to uh, some of the shows out there and, and trying to uh, kind of compete on the trade show, show circuit, if I can speak correctly, um, you know, one of the things that we keep talking about is uh, this type of event being a very community-centric, very um, family-oriented and, and uh, awesome event versus just a typical vendor row mm -hmm. horse loop that you go through and then head out. So um, what's kind of your take on on this type of an event uh, at UTV Takeover where it's uh, very com community-oriented uh, versus, you know, being inside a building in a horseshoe and then, you know, drinking beer and leaving? Yeah, I think there's benefits to both. Um, Drinking beer or... Oh, that happens regardless where you okay. go. You got you to gotta be one with your customer. Yeah. <laughs> you got to get on their level. But um, no, it's here. I would say it's better because you can go out and ride. So say at the end of the day, uh, there's the same people that were, you were talking to and trying to educate them on their product. I can take my car out and pull up next to them and kind of, you know, show them hands on, give them a ride or, you know, whatever you need to do and create more of that relationship rather than... Like the Sancho, it's still a great show. Like we do great there, but it's more, you know, just very sales focused and you try to develop a relationship, but it's not the same as when you're hanging out with them afterwards at night, you know, chatting it up and shooting. This is more B2B, you know, mm -hmm. for sure. So, But they're both, they're both good. I would say another downfall of this event is you don't want to be selling stuff. You want to be riding. So it's, <laughs> there <laughs> you, is that. you, you got to balance like the uh if you want to stay in your booth or ride or what what you know that's a trade-off for everything but. well you and i are in the similar boat from the standpoint that uh like you're really close to no longer direct featuring at an event like that and supporting your dealers correct and we're there you know we uh you know pretty much every event that we go to now uh, oftentimes there's three to four dealers and it's probably going to make more sense moving forward for us to put a display up and then just work in those respective booths throughout the throughout the show. You're you're getting close to that as well. Yeah, our dealer network is still smaller. Obviously, we're a newer company, so we're working on that. But um, as soon as like this show, we have uh, Superior and Old Glory uh, carrying our products. So I'm just here like for support, questions if they need stuff, that kind of deal. So it makes my life easier where I can like I said go out and ride and do some things. And if they need something, I'm still here to help them and helps make them money grows my business so it's a beneficial relationship all the way around well the great thing about having you on the show is you know you and i've known each other for about two years and i've been running your gear for about two years and i learned more about your product in the first five minutes of the show because usually when you and i are talking it's just straight smack talk <laughs> the entire time <laughs> exactly. it could be about football it could be about driving but it's just it's well, that's what got you in an x3 too this the turbo life on my end got you out of the YX. yeah i was out at sturgis <laughs> and uh if I was in the trails and stuff, we were ripping. But once it opened up, he was gone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hashtag Turbo Life. Pretty much. So, anyways, uh, the great show. Uh, we're we're kind of just at the beginning of, of everyone showing up and having a good time. And we got some events happening here uh, fairly soon. Uh, some racing. We're going to go check it out. And, um, yeah, it should be a good time. Are you going to be sticking around all weekend, check out Huckfest and all that? Yep. We'll be here till probably packing up Sunday morning and... Uh We'll be here for sales, support, everything. Did you did you race the uh, the rally cross out at Sturgis? I did. Are you going to race it here? 
Probably not. Really? <laughs> yeah. Like I said, fresh rebuild, fresh rebuild. Oh, gotta, yeah. Fair enough. <laughs> got to make it last more than the first first weekend out. Yeah. How but long it, did but that it makes pro- for a good story. So. How long did that pro last that you were driving at uh, Trailier? <laughs> a day and a half. <laughs> 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 little lawn dart incident yeah when you're uh jumping with the dune and destroy guys sarah price and rj you know you you got a little uh want to one up people but it gave, it gave me some notoriety you know everyone you know i didn't know a bunch of people at that event but after that they're like oh you're that guy and i was like yeah, <laughs> yeah. you gotta have your claim so <laughs> I, I love the name drop so i was out there riding with sarah price rj no big deal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh yeah we've uh, talked a little bit about um the ability for customers to get a good deal right now on some, certain products that are still in uh inventory uh, as well as getting the new the new branding on their car. So where can they uh, find those products? Where can they find you and, and see what's going on with Amped Off-Road? Uh, ampedoffroad.com has all of our products, and then you can hit us up on Instagram. It's at Amped Off-Road. Our Facebook's the same. You know, if you got any questions, give us a call. Um, we pride ourselves on, you know, customer service and whatever you guys need. We'll take care of you and make sure it's done right. Sounds good to me. Yeah, you, uh, I, I, I can vouch for the whole customer service aspect. Like, uh, one of his customers was actually my father-in-law, and I shot him a message after he'd already taken care of him. And when I heard how he took care of him, I'm like, well, well dang, because he had no idea that he was my father-in-law. So, yeah, customer service, this guy fli- fits, fits the bill. I'll get it out. <laughs> Sorry. Wait, is he flipping the bill? Or Because, I mean, if we're no, flipping the bill. No, he won't pick up a check. We've hung out. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Well, uh, enjoy the show. We look forward to seeing some more of your stuff. And uh, for everyone else, Peace.